Yo, viewers. Every person should design an integrated circuit every day. Then once a month, they should actually fabricate that IC and use it. The reason I say this is because I was thinking about Jesus. Now, if Jesus had said every person should write 10 or 20 words a day and then once a month decide which of the things they had written uh, they liked the most, then everyone uh, of all genders and forms would have learned to write. And that would have caused a much wider part of society to have been uh, competent and active and capable and meritorious and productive. All of those people did what they were able to do, yet by saying everyone should write, Jesus would have caused everyone to be literate. And that would have caused tremendous benefits throughout society. Thus, I say everyone should design an, an integrated circuit every day. Now, that's actually quite a bit uh, more fun and more pleasant than it may sound. I think during the past 24 hours, I've designed somewhere between 7 and 11 integrated circuits. And some of them, I've actually gotten to the point where I visualize the electronic parts, and then I can describe uh, the kind of assembly language that would cause those parts to function. And then uh, I can imagine uh, using that assembly language plus something like Spice or P-Spice to actually specify the layout of an integrated circuit. So I'll describe some of those, these now. They're not that thrilling. The thing is, though, is that if uh, large numbers of people made large numbers of integrated circuits, large numbers of people would have high competencies, regardless of their social position. Also, there would be a large number of uh, physical things which would perform much more effectively, because there would be millions and millions or billions of people uh, casually doing uh, electronic circuitry. Well, we'll start with uh, a really complicated one, because it's fun to talk about. Right now, I'm talking on a handy phone. Now, when you think about it, handy phones uh, during the year 2011 had uh, what was called a battery life. And although there were researchers that were working on making it so that there were handy phones that could work completely without batteries uh, from inductive power alone. Uh, my thought was is that there are a couple ways to make handy phone battery life much longer. Uh, one of the simplest of these, and a slightly amusing way, is for the uh, microprocessor of the handy phone to notice which persons are called most frequently, and then make a model of those persons' voice characteristics. Then, using that model of the person's voice characteristics, they could simplify the data that they transmit and receive uh, to the handy phone's uh, central communications tower. That way, in order to get a voice that sounded just like the person that you talk to frequently, you could use only the changes from a standard model, as well as the standard model stored as kind of a lookup table at the handy phone, as well as possibly the uh, central lookup tower, to cause uh, less data to be required to transmit information. Now, the reason you would do a thing like that is handy phones uh, work with a radio. And what you could do is you could minimize the amount of power used on the radio transmission, uh, which would save battery life, because you could transmit less data per moment with a different battery power. Now, that's quite a complicated, uh, or well, it's not that complicated. It's actually a fairly ordinary blend of uh, microprocessor along with uh, application. Yet when you think about it as an IC, what you're really doing is you're looking at the uh, DSP, the, um, the waveform processing. That's the difference between uh, a person's common phonemes and the uh, minimal description of that 
to look up a similar phoneme at a lookup table. If you really want to go cheap, you could use a voice similar, where it just found a match similar to the person's voice, and then use that as a kind of artificial voice. And if that took a tenth of the uh, radio transmission, then the batteries on the handy phone might last noticeably longer. Uh, another uh, integrated circuit that I thought about, you'll notice that I didn't actually go all the way to uh, uh, describing the electronics of the handy phone circuit there, is uh, what's similar to a uh, DC to AC converter or uh, something called a monostable multivibrator. Basically, if you've got DC and you want a varying waveform out, you use a few transistors in a diode to cause the uh, transistors to flip back and forth which one's active, and then that causes a source waveform. Now, I thought that it would be uh, aesthetically pleasant to link something like that to a semiconductor photosensor, and then the semiconductor photosensor would basically give a percentage of time that the uh, waveform was at a particular mode, then that would um, basically cause some kind of a pleasant little thing like, a, like an artwork or uh, uh, some little lighted thing a person might have on their lawn to look different at different times of day. But it's a much simpler IC, a much simpler integrated circuit than uh, connecting an entire digital clock to uh, an LED based on what time the digital clock says it is. Um, so I was actually able to think about that at the transistor level, at least moderately. And when you think about that at the transistor level, then I'm aware of uh, software programs you could use to specify that as a, um, a CAD diagram to make, uh, to fabricate uh, semiconductor wafers with that particular shape on them. Uh, so that's the kind of thing maybe a teenager would do. Uh, maybe younger, maybe uh, maybe like a seven-year-old or something like that. Um, because actually, really, it's just like three or four transistors, a diode, and a phototransistor. Um, another uh, one of these things that I thought of another simple application that I thought of. Uh, which actually goes well with a person doing integrated circuit design, is right now there's a pre-existing library of things that detect the sounds that uh, automatic machines make, things like vehicles or trucks, then decides if there's something about them that suggests that it's time for them to be maintained or repaired. Now, I think that a person could use those uh, libraries that uh, diagnose things based upon their sound, um, plus something like a Bluetooth transceiver, as well as uh, something very similar to one of those um, linear audio storage ICs altogether. And those are basically called uh, IP cores, intellectual property cores. Um, and you just uh, attach those to each other to make something about the size of one of those stick-on digital clocks that you could put on any fleet vehicle or any car that would detect when it uh, would most benefit from being uh, serviced or repaired. And that could be good for mileage as well as longevity of the vehicle. So when I thought about that, I was able to realize that there were pre-existing IP cores that I could just assemble together with software and then run through uh, IC testing. Um, prior to fabrication to uh, make something like that. So that might have been uh, one of the ICs that I thought of on a particular day. I urge everybody to create a new integrated circuit every day to visualize it at the assembly language and transistor level, then uh, fabricate it using uh, computer construction. It's actually somewhat more natural and pleasant than it sounds, particularly compared with the amount of effort that went into teaching me to read and write. I went to public school uh, to learn to read and write, and um, I graduated from high school and at 18, and I guess I started around age five. Yet, to design an integrated circuit, I could learn all of those skills uh, probably, actually, less than a month. I think a person could learn them in less than a month. 